So the challenge for us is that we need to create a learning environment that realizes and leverages this media environment. And we've got to take this a step further and suggest that what we really need is not just learning environment, but to think about our learning environments as platforms for, for participation. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. And that these platforms for participation need to allow students to understand this emerging media environment. So as they see these new tools come in, they don't see them as simply things to entertain themselves with, which is fine, but they also see them as, as, as tools that, are, you know, that can help them collaborate better to create something new and, and so on. So that they can actually, in some ways, we want them to use these new media tools rather than these tools just sort of using them. So this is the big idea. So here's back to the classroom. And I'm going to show you what we've been doing in this classroom here. Uh, now I'm going to start off with some mild stuff and then I'll get to the crazy stuff. So here's the mild stuff. What we did was we created a portal. This is on NetVibes. And you can go, if you go to netvibes.com slash WESH, this is actually open and you can see what it looks like live and you can play around in it if you want. Um, but what we have here is on the left here, let's see if I can get this to work. There. Um, on the left we have a uh, Facebook application. This is just the iPhone Facebook application, so it's built right into the platform. So this is nice because students can sort of navigate their Facebook and they have all this other stuff going on at the same time. Uh, I didn't take that decision lightly. I'm still not sure if I want to keep the Facebook application there because it's obviously distracting. Um, but it's there for now and it's, it's worked out well so far. Down here we just have like a Google News aggregator that's bringing in all the latest news on anthropology. This is an intro level course, so news is kind of appropriate for them. They're not, a lot of them aren't really ready to, to see like the latest research articles. I still put those up here, which I'll show you, but it, for the most part they mostly just read the news art articles. Then uh, in the middle we have, this is an RSS feed coming from our wiki, which I'll show you in just a second. Over here we have a Twitter stream, so we, the students can tweet to each other. Uh, I'll show you how we use that in a moment. And then down here we have, uh, this is a Digo feed, so this is where we can actually go out on the web and mark things up and tag things, and it all comes back here to be shared with the rest of the class. And then here, this is uh, from cultura.com, and this is a place where we can share a video and actually edit the video together. Uh, so I'm going to take you inside the wiki and show you what this looks like. So first off, on the front page, you can see we have like our basic schedule. In the schedule, you can see there's an easy edit button up at the top, um, and it has a lock on it. That's because the one thing that I control in the class is the schedule. But that's in this, this is in a class of 200 people. It would just be chaos if I let 200 people dictate, you know, like what we were going to do next. So, um, so I locked that one down and I, I'm sort of the final say on that one. Everything else is unlocked though. And so, for example, after I give a lecture or during a lecture, students will actually take notes collectively on the wiki. And uh, what's the outcome of this has been that I don't have to share very many of my notes at all. I don't have to like put my notes out there. Instead, the students are creating the notes, and they're the best notes I've ever seen because they're augmented with YouTube videos, uh, Wikipedia articles, um, all kinds of stuff that either supports my arguments or goes against it. And the best moments are, of course, the ones that go against your argument because then it creates a moment of discussion and reflection. And one of the things I liked was that I could actually see what was significant to the students. So, for example, uh, here I was lecturing about... Um, Metaphors, Metaphors We Live By. It's a book by Lakoff and Johnson, and it's this great book that basically asks you to uh, sort of consider the types of metaphors that are embedded in our everyday language that are all around us. So I use the example of, of this idea of finding yourself. So like the students are all involved in this. Like most, most students, say 17 to 21 years old, are all like really intent on finding themselves. But of course that's a metaphor because you can't actually find yourself. And so I started, I just like asked them, to, you know, start thinking about another metaphor and we started brainstorming metaphors like, you know, you could say instead of finding yourself, think about creating yourself or even losing yourself. Maybe losing yourself is the answer, you know, in a sort of Buddhist way. And uh, and ultimately, they, they wrote this down and they were so excited about it. They put it in red, they wrote it down twice, they put it in bold and all this stuff. And 
Meanwhile, the question that I was going to ask them about this on the exam was, who wrote the book Metaphors We Live By and what year was it written? Which is a really stupid question. And, and, like, and the better question is something based on this, right, that grabs that significance of the learning. And somehow it would be much better if I could have created a question around this. So the cool thing about having the students take the notes was it allowed me to reflect on what my real message was and what the impact of my message was in my lectures. So then, of course, there's discussion sections on the wiki. And every, every wiki page has its own discussion section so they can talk about specific parts. Um, then this is, this is where people really got sold on the wiki. And I, I'll just mention that when I started this, 200 students on this wiki, I did a survey at the beginning and only five people uh, had ever edited a wiki before. So this is what I mean by media literacy, not being there necessarily. And uh, in fact, over half the class did not actually know that a wiki could be edited. So even though they're looking at Wikipedia all the time, they don't even realize necessarily that that is a wiki and that it can be edited. So there's a lot of media literacy problems around that. But this is where I really sold them because we had an exam and I just put up 40 words on the wiki that they needed to know something about for the exam. And I didn't want to put anything else into it. I wanted them just to to you know, learn on their own. And what happened was, very quickly, within 24 hours after I posted this, it turned into an 11-page like <laughs> document of, you can see how they expanded every single word. They added YouTube videos and pictures and all this type of stuff. And it became this, the best like, uh, exam review sheet I've ever seen. And the cool thing was, behind the scenes, I can actually see, you know, I could see like, my own additions, and then I could see everybody's addition after that. Um, and I could see exactly how many words they added. I could see what words they added. And if you look over here to the left, you can see there's pictures of people. And those pictures actually get bigger with the more contributions they make. So if you're like really active, then your face gets really big. So it's sort of just like at a glance, you can actually see like the participation happening. You can see who's participating and so on. Um, and all of this, all these updates immediately come back here. So the moment a student makes an update, it comes back here. So this is why I put Facebook here was because my hope was that students would start using Facebook here and then they could see like immediately, oh look, somebody just like added some notes on the exam review and they can go and check it out. So um, it's similar to, uh, there's now some libraries have started putting some of the library books inside the, uh, the food court and that kind of thing because they can't get students to the library but maybe they can bring the library to the students. <laughs> so this is a similar model sort of virtually. Um, then over here we have Digo which is a lot like Delicious which allows students to go around the web. Um, so for example they can be on this web page here and they can actually highlight something on the web, leave a note, uh, tag it to organize it and they can actually leave notes to each other. Uh, they, can, they can have conversations with each other and so on. So you have these conversations emerging right on the web page. And all of that then is also coming back here. So as students are exploring the web, all this information is then coming back to, the, uh, to this portal here. Those same links can also be embedded on any of the wiki pages. So these are actual live feeds that are on the wiki pages here. Then uh, up at the top you can see there's multiple tabs in this portal. So I use one of the tabs here for research articles and for like um, blogs put out by scholars that are based on the topics that we're studying. So there's maybe I have 20 blogs here or so and students can go there at any time and sort of get the latest research and that kind of thing. 